How can we evaluate and mitigate risks associated with the experiential learning? Within any organization, risk management takes a high level of priority. Within the context of experiential learning, there may be a variety of factors impacting whether adequate focus is placed on risk. Giving consideration to the risks that may be attached to EL activities is important, both the risks that may impact students and the risks that they may impose on others. Learning to identify, evaluate, and mitigate risks is essential. Before we begin, a brief disclaimer. This module is not legal advice and is not intended as legal advice, simply a base level of information for you to consider when thinking about and or planning experiential learning activities. We've, we've been able to provide the students with increased um, coverage, which really has opened the doors. Some placements get nervous. Oh, there's no coverage? Not sure, right? So it was closing some doors for our students across the province. And so I think the biggest challenge was just in developing the business case to make sure that the ministry uh, understood our concerns and that there was really no extra risk for them and that this was a positive thing for Ontario students. And in those documents that have a process flow, we also provide them with clear checklists that they can use and the documents that they are just filling in the students' names uh, and having signatures on them and, and what have you. So we've provided clear processing um, documents and uh, the associated checklist that they need to really bring it forward and have a successful placement. They do have to have the WMIS training so that they can understand that sometimes there are toxic medications that they can be using, so the handling of it. Of course, in our program, we're not using any real drug, but still, if the label says it, we expect them to treat everything just the same. And um, there is a policy in case somebody were to get um, injured, we would have to make a report out for it. And luckily, we've been um, fortunate. Little nits, yes, <laughs> but nothing. Uh, major. We have a huge focus on occupational health and safety, but that would be a learning outcome of the program anyways. I would want them to be able to keep themselves safe on a contaminated site, and I actually feel better that the first contaminated site they're on, I'm there watching them, growling them off the side, saying don't touch that, don't smell that, don't, don't go near there. So in so many ways it's so much more effective for me than just telling an abstract third party story to be there on site experiencing it with them. So most definitely it requires a lot of the faculty in terms of vigilance and in terms of, of their agreement to be client ready at all times. If students were interacting with um, members of um, cultural communities or with uh, vulnerable, vulnerable people who uh, are receiving services because of their low income or poverty, it was important to encourage students to think about the ways that they might need to express sensitivity to people's situations. Um, that extended to um, issues of confidentiality. These risks were addressed by conversation because <laughs> it's the purpose of the course to open up the kinds of issues that undermine student participation or civic participation. The ways that we all have to ideally take risks to cross cultural or class divisions between members of the same community.